My name is Rocky Heron. I spent 31 years as a special agent for the DEA, the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, trying to stop drug traffickers at the local, national, and international levels. And this is us getting stuck in the uh, Verona alligator infested waters. I saw too many beautiful people just like you lose their lives or the quality of their lives because they didn't understand the consequences of abusing drugs and alcohol. Today, I use those experiences as a basis for teaching young people like you the hard truth about what substance abuse will do to you and your dreams and your futures, hoping that some of you are listening and that some of you will make better choices. Today, we're going to talk about how damaging smoking and vaping of nicotine and using marijuana is for young people. Vaping and weed are so popular in our culture today that I think many young people use these products just assuming that they're safe. Many people are getting rich selling you these products, and they want you to believe that it's safe and harmless, and they even want you to believe it's going to improve your life somehow. In this chapter, I'm going to show you a different side. We'll start with nicotine, which is a really nasty drug. By some estimates, as many as 5 million people die every year around the world because of using different forms of nicotine. Historically, most people use it in cigarettes, and our country spent decades teaching young people how nasty cigarettes are. Eventually, we convinced young people in America that smoking cigarettes isn't smart or cool. Your generation thinks they're gross, and you're right. While nicotine, the addictive drug in the cigarettes and the vapes, doesn't cause overdoses, it does cause one of the most difficult addictions to quit. In the 1960s, laws were passed in the United States to make sure that the dangers from cigarette smoking were clearly stated on labels on the products, and programs were developed to teach students in schools the truth about nicotine addiction, lung and heart damage, and cancer risks from using tobacco products. Over the following decades, youth cigarette smoking began to decline, and there was a chance that it would have continued to decline to almost nothing. Unfortunately, that decline in smoking caused the tobacco companies to lose huge amounts of money. The tobacco companies have always had a business plan. That plan is to get you addicted early. And that's why they advertise smoking to make it look cool and interesting. Because once you're addicted, those tobacco companies know that you will buy their products for your entire life, no matter what they do to you. When they realize that you didn't want their cigarettes anymore, they came up with a different way to get you addicted. The vape, and it worked. Even the name vape is a lie. The companies that make these things want you to think you're breathing in flavored water vapor. In fact, you're breathing in a toxic mix of chemicals and solvents like propylene glycol, nicotine, and formaldehyde, and so many others. The most important chemical in the vapes for the companies is the nicotine because that's the one that's gonna give you the addiction and that's the one that's gonna turn you into a product of that same tobacco company. The numbers of young people using vapes is increasing every year and the age they start is getting younger. Many teens say they like to vape because they feel it helps them with anxiety and stress. The sad truth is that vaping will only increase that anxiety and stress. There are health risks from vaping and they can be serious and even deadly. But the risk I'm worried about is the one that you're almost guaranteed to experience the addiction to the nicotine. You all know that cigarette smoking is addictive, but maybe you haven't stopped to think about the fact that it's the same nicotine in the vapes. And in fact, the companies are making even more addictive nicotine to sell to you in the vapes. This man suffered cancer from smoking cigarettes. Miraculously, doctors were able to save him by cutting out the cancer in his throat. And they left a small hole called a stoma so that he could continue to breathe and live. This man suffered terribly from his smoking, and yet he continues to smoke. If I were to ask you why someone would keep smoking after suffering like that, you would all say, duh, he's addicted. Because you all understand how addictive the nicotine in cigarettes is. But I fear that many of you don't realize that it's the same nicotine in the vapes, and you're gonna get at least as addicted as this guy did. Nicotine is one of the most addictive chemicals in humans. It won't kill you from an overdose. But once you are hooked, you're going to have a very difficult time trying to stop using it. The tobacco companies know this, 
and that's why they try so hard to make it look fun and interesting. They know that once you start, many of you won't stop. Nicotine is not a nice chemical. In nature, nicotine is a toxin found in the tobacco plant. Its job is to keep bugs and animals from eating that tobacco plant. For hundreds of years, long before we could go buy pesticide at a store, people would make their own pesticide for nicotine. So, the next time you're thinking about taking a hit on a vape, or you see some other kid trying to look cool by vaping, ask yourself, is it actually all that cool to use a vaporized insecticide on plants and then inhale it and wind up addicted to it? I don't think that's cool at all. Now we're gonna talk about marijuana. The marijuana or cannabis plant is actually a very interesting plant that grows all over the world. It contains more than 400 different chemicals. The chemicals we're concerned with are tetrahydrocannabinol or THC or cannabidiol, CBD. THC is the drug in the marijuana plant that gets you high. The natural marijuana plant has about 4% THC. And just a few decades ago, the marijuana that got people high was that 4% natural THC level in the natural marijuana plant. There's a whole field of science studying the medical benefits from other chemicals in marijuana like CBD. I've never used an illegal drug, not even marijuana. When I was in middle school, my friends offered me marijuana to smoke with them. I knew at 12 that marijuana wasn't gonna kill me and I wanted to be good with my friends. I didn't have that many friends at that age and I did not wanna lose the few that I had. A couple times I came close to smoking the weed just to be good with those friends. But then I realized something very powerful. I realized that even if I liked the marijuana, it was never gonna help me get ahead in my life. I made a decision at that young age that I was never gonna use anything that I knew wasn't gonna help me accomplish my dreams and goals. So I told my friends, no thanks. And I kept saying no thanks until they stopped offering it to me. I didn't abandon my friends and my friends didn't abandon me. I just made a decision for myself. You can make that same decision for yourself. Today, in places like California, where the growing and selling of marijuana has been legalized for anyone over 21 years old, it's no longer that natural 4% THC marijuana plant that my friend smoked. The people selling the marijuana have modified the plant, and what is most often grown is now a hybrid plant that produces 25% or more THC. It's nothing like that original natural marijuana plant. Smoking a joint today means the smoker may take in five or six times as much THC as someone smoking a joint when I was young. But the marijuana industry keeps telling you it's a quote, natural substance. And sometimes in school, students will even ask me why I'm talking about marijuana because they think it's not even a drug. That's how much we have allowed the marijuana industry to brainwash young people in our country. My friend, Dr. Natalie Laub, is a pediatrician who has spent years studying the effects of marijuana on adolescent brains. Here's what she tells her young patients. There are both short-term and long-term consequences of teenagers using marijuana products. The short-term consequences are when it causes difficulty with concentration, difficulty with attention, difficulty regulating their emotions, which ultimately affects all aspects of life. It affects the ability to do well in school. It affects the ability to have meaningful relationships, and it affects the ability to actually grow and develop as it's supposed to. The long-term consequences are still being studied. But when we look at the literature, we see adults who used marijuana in their teenage years having higher rates of behavioral and mood regulation problems such as anxiety and depression. Using cannabis now will have long-term consequences for you well into adulthood. Maybe it's because we did such a good job teaching young people about the risks of smoking. But today, many young people tell me they don't even want to smoke joints. They prefer to use THC in its concentrated forms by dabbing or vaping or eating the edibles. They make concentrated THC by taking the marijuana into laboratories where the THC is extracted. They always promise you that it's this natural substance, right? Well, let me show you what the concentrated THC looks like at a laboratory. This bubbling goo is what they use to make the TAC concentrates in edibles. I seized this from a lab in San Diego. Next time someone tries to convince you to use the concentrated form of THC by dabbing it or vaping it or eating it, 
I want you to remember that bubbling goo. The potency of this stuff today is more than 90%. I'd like you to consider the possibility that using it at those levels could be very damaging for your brains. One of the ways the marijuana business is trying to get you to use their products is by making marijuana gummies and candies, many of which are made to look exactly like sugary candies that you're used to eating. They do that on purpose because they know if they make it look fun and harmless, you are more likely to use it. You have to be smarter than that. It's the same concentrated THC and it will have the same effects on your body as any other form of THC. Remember, it's made from that bubbling goo. As the number of young people using today's super strong marijuana and THC has increased, so have the numbers of young people experiencing serious and sad mental health illnesses. Paranoia, psychosis, and schizophrenia are now being experienced in large numbers of young people who use this stuff and nobody knows how they will be later in life. We don't know if the marijuana causes the mental illnesses or if it just brings it out in people. You don't wanna find out if it does this to you. My friend, Dr. Ronit Lev, is an emergency room doctor in San Diego. She sees teenagers and young adults every day who have damaged themselves physically and or mentally from using that just weed. People think it's just weed, but this is not your mama's marijuana. Come visit me in the emergency department. I take care of marijuana poisonings every shift. I could just think about what I just saw a few minutes ago. A man who was just using his edibles and was running around for days naked, ended up at a fire station, you know, and doesn't remember where his house is. And this is marijuana associated psychosis. Psychosis means a feeling of in reality. You feel that people are out to get you, you're hearing voices. So he like was very specific in how much he ate. In California, there's laws on that. Each uh, piece of candy should be no more than 10 milligrams and each package should be not more than 100 milligrams. One edible is still five 1970s joints. Up the street is Rady Children Hospital. They see two cases a day of marijuana poisoning. Little kids, like two years old, getting to the mommy's, you know, uh, gummy bear, and they eat it and they end up in the ICU. The number one cause of pediatric poisoning in the United States is marijuana. Also see cases of cannabis-associated suicide. It's terrible and frightening, and it, it makes people want to end their life, and that's very sad because it's very reversible and treatable. Also see cases of what we call scrometing, screaming and vomiting. It's also called cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, and these are people who have been using marijuana for years. They're retching, they're vomiting. That's why we call it scrometing, and I see a case of that every single shift. A hundred years ago, you know, people, everybody was smoking. You know, everybody did that, right? Soldiers got their cigarettes going off to war. Um, and it took us a long time to fight, to fight a very powerful industry, big tobacco, um, to get to the truth. I like to ask kids a quiz. If I had like a plant, name this plant. People say it's healthy. It actually helps with the symptoms of anxiety and schizophrenia. And hey, nobody ever died of one puff. What's that plant? Marijuana. No, it's tobacco. And we're li reliving history now with marijuana. Same thing, nobody dies of one puff, but vaping can have a lot more nicotine than a tobacco cigarettes. People think, oh, it's just vaping. As an emergency physician, I could tell you that last week we had a 17 year old who was just vaping, who ended up in the ICU in a coma. I think the best way to, to, to deal with kids is to be honest. Not everybody who uses marijuana is going to get psychosis or schizophrenia, but it's a risk. Not everybody who smokes cigarettes is going to get lung cancer or emphysema, but it's a risk. I'm not there to tell people don't use drugs. I'm there that you should know about drugs and hopefully make the decision to protect your brain. Trying to convince you that the vaping of nicotine or using marijuana is dangerous is not an easy job because you have been told thousands of times by giant corporations, by celebrities, and by so many others that it's not dangerous. 
You have been told that vapes are just fun and have no harmful effects. They tell you that marijuana is, quote, natural, that it will make you better and more creative people. Many of you have tried it, and many of you live in environments where using it may seem normal. Because of that, you might think I'm making up this harm or even lying about this information that marijuana damages young people. But if you think I'm making up this information and you think I'm lying to you, I have a simple challenge for you. Prove me wrong. Do a Google search for teen brain damage marijuana and read some of the scientific articles you're gonna find. That science will show you that the younger you are when you use marijuana, the more likely you are to harm yourself. However, if you read that science and you still choose to believe that marijuana is not harmful for you, that's your choice. But at least it will be an informed choice. In our final chapter, we'll discuss fentanyl. Remember, none of us knows what drugs will do to us before we start. You choose your futures.